There's a lot of specific info about single Vim and NeoVim issues, like plugin managers, LSPs, and so on. But not enough info about the big picture, the full Vim and NeoVim roadmap. So let me give you the big picture. The situation is that you're coding in an IDE like VS Code, IntelliJ, Emacs, or whatever else. And now you're saying, I want to try Vim, but I don't know where to start. So I suggest you use Vim in VS Code, IntelliJ, or whatever your current IDE is to see if you like it first. If you do like it and you want to try the full Vim in NeoVim experience, then A, build your own NeoVim config if you're an advanced programmer. Or B, use a NeoVim distribution, a so-called distro. That is an out-of-the-box NeoVim configuration that includes everything you need, so you can start coding right away. I highly recommend the LazyVim distro. For keyboard-only navigation in the browser, use Vimium in Chrome and Firefox. For keyboard-only navigation on your operation system, use Fluent Search on Windows and Home Row on Mac. Let me quickly explain what the problem is in navigating a decentralized innovative ecosystem. NeoVim is a fork of Vim, and the goal of NeoVim is to make Vim more customizable and extensible. So there's a plethora of uh, plugins and best practices and intro videos and all the color schemes and more that you want. So it's a blooming ecosystem. The advantage is innovation and many sources of information are there. The disadvantage is that you need to find your own way through the NeoVim jungle. So what makes Vim so good is that it's tailored to navigating and editing text as efficiently as possible. Coding without Vim will feel like editing code in Word, the Windows program Word. Let me show you some examples of what I mean. What we want to do now is we want to change this true to false, this true to false, this true should stay true, and this true should be false as well. Okay, so let's get back to the first one. How would we do it if it was a word-like text editor? So how would we do it without Vim? Would be like this. This is how you would do it uh, without Vim. Okay, let's change it back. And now let's do it with Vim. We would go into uh, Vim Visual Multi mode, so to say. So with a plugin called Vim Visual Multi, we would select this one. Then with an N, you go to the next one. With an N, you go to the next one, but you tell it to skip it with Q. And then we select this one as well. Okay, now those three are selected. You can see that the E here is slightly marked. Okay. Now we do C for change. We type false, escape, and that's it. Another cool concept of Vim is that you can combine a number of lines plus a command to execute something for the current line plus several more lines. The primer gen calls it command count motion. So one example here would be, we want to comment out the current line plus the 10 lines below. So that makes it 11 lines. So let's do 11 GCC. 11 lines GCC is the key map in LazyVim to comment out a line. So in this case, 11 lines get commented out. 11 GCC. Or another example would be that you want to delete the current line plus the four lines below. So let's do 5 DD. And this concept you will find a lot in Vim of a number plus what you want to do. So if I want to jump down to relative line 13, let's do 13 J. Now I'm here right away. Another cool NeoVim feature is the fuzzy finder. So if you have a more complex code base like this one here, you don't want to navigate around like this, go into a folder, ah, okay, I need this file. That's too tedious. So what you do is you open the fuzzy finder and you remember, ah, I wanted to find a file in the pages directory. Okay, it was an article, right? It was about Vim. 
All oh, right, it was vimresources.mdx. Now you got it. Very quickly. So now that I convinced you to use Vim, should you use a distro or should you build your own config? For advanced programmers, I suggest you build your own config. For beginners and intermediate programmers, use a distro, a distribution. I link below to the lazy Vim distro, which I use myself and which I think is fantastic. I think it's very important that you know why you use specific motions. Understand the concepts, don't just memorize the motions. So here are some examples. Understand that A stands for append. Append. Meaning to add something to the end of a piece of writing. So A adds something to the end of a line. A also creates a file with a NeoTree plugin. In regex, in regular expressions, the dollar sign indicates the end of a string. In Vim, you can use the dollar sign to jump to the end of a line. Let me show you now how quick Vim navigation can work with the help of search labels, and then I will show you how you can use a Chrome plugin or Firefox plugin to use Vim style navigation in the browser. So search label navigation works like this. You can use a plugin like flash.nvim, which is already built into the lazy Vim distro that I suggest you use. So you press S, that calls the plugin, that makes the plugin active, then everything gets grayed out, and you type what you wanna go to. So let's just say we want to go to this equal sign here. We press equal, and then you see these search labels. And for each equal sign here, you have another search label. So we wanted to go to this one, so we type T, and then the cursor jumps to this equal sign right away. And this is how search label navigation works in the browser as well, with the help of a plugin called Vimium, which you find right here. So you press F, in this case it's F, and then you have all these search labels for each thing you can click in the browser. Uh, let's just say we want to go to this folder here, then we do FG, and it clicks this one right away. So that's super quick keyboard only search label navigation in the browser with the help of the plugin Vimium. This style of search label navigation that is very typical for Vim, you can also use on your Windows operation system and on Mac.